Okay, so this is a five inch 800 by 480 touchscreen, uh, which has been sent to me by Big Tree Tech. Uh, they reached out to me uh, and in an email they said, uh, recently our new product, a Raspberry Pi screen, will go public. I sincerely invite you to test our new screen. We are appreciative if you have any good idea and suggestions on our products. Best wishes and looking forward to your reply. I haven't had to do anything at all to this screen and I'm, I've been amazed by the quality of it. Uh, I've had a look on their website and I can't find any links or anything to it. Um, but I guess if I email them back, maybe they'll send me a link. Recently our new product will go public. So it looks like maybe uh, there, you know, it's a test one that they've sent out. You can see here that the speed looks fine. Uh, if I was to go back to the desktop interface, obviously it's a five inch screen, so everything does look very, very small. Oh, I don't want to shut down system. Quit emulation station. So this is Monk Ubuntu, uh, and I didn't have to do anything. So it was normally displayed on my 1080 monitor. As soon as it was booted up on this system, it's come up as the right size. Uh, now, I've got this mouse and keyboard so you can see I can navigate around like that but I can also use touch as well so if I was to pick all from there uh, and and box you can see that everything starts up very nicely and, and works fine I can minimize that it is small and I'm sat behind a camera so it's it's harder for me to try I noticed that Raspberry Pi OS is from a size point of view is a bit better uh, you can see here, or oh, actually Anbox is quite a good one to start up with because you can see I can click on it and it's quite a decent size. Uh, I did try Lineage OS uh, and it didn't boot with this screen, but I know that the Consta Kang version of Android 10, people have struggled with it at different resolutions, but uh, there is no way of changing this resolution on here. So if I go into menu, displays, tap on displays you can see that it comes up by 800 by 400 comes up as unknown uh, and it is using a little ribbon cable and I'll show you that all in a minute so let's try booting something else I haven't tried Windows 10 yet I'm interested to see what happens if I try and boot Windows 10 with this and I am overclocked without a fan at the moment but uh, you could certainly set it up with a fan and again I'll show that when I when I turn it around in fact, let's shut it down and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so let's have a look at what it's like behind. So if I flip it over, you can see that the Pi screws onto it with these four mounting screws. And from a display connection, this is the display. Uh, so you can see there's a ribbon connection that goes from the display into the ribbon connection on the Pi. Now, one thing you notice about this is the SD card is in there and you can't actually get it in and out very easily at all without disconnecting the ribbon. It's not too bad to disconnect the ribbon. Basically, if you just pull up on this and then you pull the ribbon out, there you go, you can see. So now the SD card uh, is accessible but not easily accessible. So there's a couple of ways you could do this. You could use a multi-boot operating system like PinOS or Berry Boot, uh, and you would leave the SD card in there. Because I do loads of testing, I have a ridiculous amount of SD cards. Uh, some of those are doubled and tripled up. Uh, so I'm always changing them around. So I was asked for suggestions uh, and any thoughts I had on it in the email. And uh, one of the ones would be this ribbon cable. So if we could have something that folded uh, and then folded and folded back and then would plug in. I don't know how expensive that is to do, but obviously you see it in mobile phones uh, all the time when you see teardowns of iPhones and things like that. They have these folded cables. Uh, and that would then give you access to that micro SD card slot. I would like that. Uh, also, if you just add a couple of long standoffs on the back here, uh, that would mean that the screen would actually lean back, uh, and that would be quite a nice addition as well, because then you don't need to use anything else with it. So let's show you what it's like uh, and when it comes. So this is what it looks like uh, when you take the pie off. So we've got the standoffs here. Uh, it doesn't come with the ribbon cable attached, you have to pop that in uh, and I had to work out which way around it went uh, but that wasn't too hard because you can see there's terminals on one side of that um, but uh, literally you just pop your pie on the top and screw it down and obviously it has to go that way around because the ribbon cable is so close. I didn't really have any instructions but it didn't really need it. I was thinking I was going to need uh, to have some sort of drivers or anything like that and I did find on the site but I'm not sure if it applies to this one 
There's a GitHub for Big Tree Tech and touchscreen firmware. I haven't had any of that. I haven't needed any of that. It's it's worked with uh, so Monk Ubuntu, Raspberry Pi OS, and RetroPie. And I'm going to try it on a few other operating systems. Uh, so let's just screw it back together uh, and plug it in again. There you go. So that's screwed back on. Now I like to overclock, uh, and so you can see with this there is no fan at the moment, but there's nothing to stop me using something like this fan uh, or a Pimeroni fan shim. Uh, but if I use this fan, uh, this would actually work. I just need those standoffs. So when I get that standoff, uh, I can then pop that on the back and that gives me a back cover, but it also gives me some active cooling, which is great. Okay, so Windows 10 has booted up. Let's just log in. Nice amount of travel on my keyboard. There you go, so the interface it's, I'm quite far away from a five inch screen, but it's, uh, yeah, it looks fine. So let's right click on that and let's have a look at what it's, uh, what it's done with the resolution because it just seems to have worked. Now I would have had it set at 720. I think the screen is 800 by 480. So it comes up as 1280 by 720. So in Windows 10 uh, on Raspberry Pi, you can never change the resolution within Windows. You have to do that beforehand. But that actually looks pretty decent. And if I start to go on the start bar, actually I haven't tried touch yet. No, so touch doesn't work on this. Uh, obviously you would need some sort of drivers to be able to do that, but um, I can use the mouse and keyboard and it's, uh, it's funny to see Windows running on a five inch screen. That is tiny. Uh, so let's put something else on. So this is RetroPie 64-bit CRT Arcade Blast, so let's give that a try. I've got my RetroPie stick in there as well, so it'll come up with all sorts of things on here. Now a good one would be something like Game Boy, uh, and so we could say Castlevania. Actually, I haven't connected any, any sound to this. Uh, obviously you can use Bluetooth with most systems. I'm just going to plug in uh, an audio cable for the purpose of this test. Yeah, this is where the mount would be handy because uh, it's getting heavier with all these things plugged in. But you don't need to plug all this in. Oh, this is an ordinary Game Boy game. This is a an original Game Boy game. There we go. So you can see that's working fine. Let's hit start. That pauses that. Let's quit out of that. And let's just try a few other things. So if I go back, Game Boy Advance was what I thought I was clicking on. So what if we got Driver USA? Let's give that a try. So yeah, everything's filling the screen perfectly, just as I want it to. There we go, that was a really long intro. Oh, it's, it's like GTA, I did do this in another video. <laughs> that looks great, doesn't it? I don't know if I, how I look at, oh, there's Vakala. Start, not start, select, no. Oh, shoulder buttons, I forgot about shoulder buttons. Yeah, that looks good. It keeps up with it well. Right, so let's uh, quit out of that. I have to stress that I haven't done any configuration of this at all. Everything is just working. So let's try what happens with touchscreen now. Uh, so the touchscreen isn't enabled in this, look. But don't worry, it is later on in uh, Raspberry Pi OS. So let's try what N64 have I got on there. So that's coming up in the middle of the screen. So it looks like it's going to be the right resolution. Yeah, that's filling the screen fine. Again, nothing. I've, I've done nothing to this at all. I've literally just plugged in that ribbon cable, put four screws in the back, and, uh, and powered it up. Well, that looks decent. Of course, it, it obviously makes it look, all the pixels are so much closer together that it makes things look really, really crisp. Oh, what's accelerate? Yeah, it, keep, it keeps up with the action fine, doesn't it? That, that does look nice and smooth. Oh, <laughs> let's try something else. Uh, I'm not getting any overheating uh, warnings at the moment. I think I've overclocked this. I'm not using a fan on it, which is so not ideal. But as I said before, I can I can add a fan to it. P PSP would be one of the best things to have on this because it's a similar size screen. There you go. So you can see that close up. It is very smooth. It looks really nice if I move around. Yeah, I'm super impressed with this. 
I've turned off the light in here, that looks better. So you can see that all the movement looks nice and that's perfectly playable. Right, so let's show you the touchscreen working and a bit of Raspberry Pi OS. Okay, so here we have Raspberry Pi OS and just to show you the touchscreen side of it, you can see that I can flick through the menus uh, and it's all very responsive. I think it said five point touchscreen. So all of that works. Uh, and if I was to launch Super Mario, this is the Pi Kiss version. Hit start. This was the first thing I tried on it and it was a great first thing to try on it. Here we go, so you can see that it works very well for this. And this actually works fine on a five inch screen. I'm quite far away from this, but if I was closer to this, it would be even better. Okay, so safe to say that I've been very impressed by this. Uh, it's The picture quality is really surprisingly good. The contrast is great. Uh, the touchscreen is nice and responsive. The fact that you don't have to do any drivers or anything to work with Raspberry Pi OS really surprised me. Uh, and in fact, every operating system that I've tried to boot up has automatically worked. So uh, yeah, great work. Thanks very much to Big Tree Tech. If I get a link for it, I'll put it in the description. I'll email them with a link to my video so they uh, hopefully see that and then uh, can let you know if you can order these. Um, but at the moment, I think it is in pre-release. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.